at just around 7 meters. Megalania is not who I would call the strongest creature, but he does have some uses in certain circumstances. But before I teach you how to fight as him, anyone else think that this standing up and looking around is just adorable? I just love it. Hello there, my name is Alton Vokter and I'm going to show you how to properly fight as a Megalania. However, there are a few things I need to get out of the way first. First of all, my time with the Megalania are pretty limited, so you more experienced Megalania players might not agree with everything I say, and if you find something disagreeable, just comment it down below in a common, mature way. As for the development of the playstyle for Megalania, even in under the production of this video, Megalania has received a few more abilities on the test branch, some that may change the way you have to fight as a Megalania. Despite it being already on the test branch, which means that the update will come sooner or later, I will make this video even though it will change, it just means more content for me. Of course, I will update the combat guide once the update are released. But in this video, we will first be going over the current arsenal of the Megalania, what type of subspecies you should choose, the terrain compatibility, and what type of fights you can find yourself in. And due to Megalania being capable of being on land and water, we will, we will be going over the fights in both those areas. And at the end I'll summarize. For head abilities, we have two slots, meaning we can have two abilities. The first ability is Wiper Strike, which causes light damage, but it does give your opponents Venom. The other ability is Venom Bite. This attack also delivers Venom to your enemies, and it has stronger damage output. Downside is, it does have a cooldown. For Senses, we have two options. The first option being Nictitating Membrane, which lets you see clearer underwater. And the other option is Twilight Menace, which increases your stamina regeneration but only during night. For Hide we have two options, the first one being Streamliner, which increases your swimming speed and turning speed in water. The second one is Toxic Immunity, which makes you immune against Venom and Poison. If this increases your defense, I'm not too sure, but I don't think it does. For Legs we have the Dive ability. In short terms, this gives you the ability to be in water, and it also increases your oxygen. For backlim, we have two options. The first option being Leap, that increases your jump height and decreases fall damage. The second ability being Webbed Feet, which just increases your swimming speed and decreases stamina drain. The call ability has been released, but at the current state, there's no option. The reason why I left some slots open, it is because your arsenal kinda depends on your situation. Take for example, if you're in an area that doesn't have any big bodies of water close by, then you'll probably want to invest in stuff for land fights. And of course vice versa if you're in a different environment. In other words, you gotta adapt to your situation. The search pieces you should go for are balanced. You are by far not the strongest creature in the game, and you kinda need the extra defense just so you can take a hit, and you do need the speeds to be able to dodge any hits you don't wanna receive. So you can't go wrong by choosing the balance one, but of course it depends on you. Megalena is pretty versatile and can fight pretty much everywhere, both land and in water. As its stature is close to the ground, it's difficult for taller creatures to hit him, especially with their tail attack. That being said, that doesn't mean they are best suited to a fight in the open. No matter what opponent you're facing, you should try to fight them in an area with a lot of hindrances and vegetation. It will make it difficult for them to spot you, and easy for you to get away, since the stamina on Megalania are pretty meh. It would be even better if you could force the battle into an area that has a large body of water, an area if you're fighting a land-based creature can't get to. You can recover stamina in water, so if you do fight a land-based creature that can't really swim, then you can just use the water to your advantage. It doesn't matter what tiers you're fighting, you should always try to dodge any charge attack. Of course, if you're up against an Apex, 
then you need to dodge their attacks as much as you can. If you're new or an inexperienced player, then you should really try and avoid soloing in Apex. To do these types of fights, you need to learn how to fake. For example, here, I'm not just screaming just to scream, I'm trying to force the player to do noises himself. That will make him busy trying to find the right call. Which will then leave him open for attacks. You can see why having water close by grants you the ability to recover stamina without being interfered and if you're low on health you can just run away and recover due to you being able to recover faster than he can. Once you're healed up you can go back for round 2. Remember you can't take a lot of hits so you have to fake and once he has him cooled down you bite. Just do not take any chances. If you're close to 50% stamina, you should go and recover. This will be a battle of attrition, and as you heal faster than he does, if you draw it out, you can win. Unfortunately, if the enemy does decide to put his back against the wall, it will be little you can do. What's more, it's more difficult now that he can predict your movement much easier. Even experienced player will struggle at this point. Without a teammate to take aggro, there's not much you can do, and only being able to attack from one direction, the odds are against you and you should give up. Again with charge up attack. Should definitely dodge them, even if they are from a pseudo apex. You have a nice turn radius, but you should try and avoid taking their attacks directly, and you should make distance if they know how to turn in place. As their attacks aren't as powerful as the apexes, you can take a few more hits. But remember to watch your stamina. Once you're low, you need to get away. Once everything is recovered, you can go back and do the same strategy as with apexes. Try and bait, and then run in for the bite. If you can, you should try and force the battle into an area where you have the water. Without water, there's only so many places you can run off to. If you do choose to stay on land, you are acceptable for their attacks. They can track you down and kill you while you're in a vulnerable state. And you should avoid that by any means. Pseudo Apexes are faster than Apexes. And if you don't watch out, they can hunt you down. And even run after you. Of course, if there are more of them, then you should get away. Unfortunately, if I had to put Megalania on a tier list, he does fall in the low category. Even against pseudo apexes, he will struggle, and I'd say only experienced player can handle a 1v1. While I say he is on the low tier, he is capable of going toe to toe with other low tiers. 1v1 that is. Against multiple, that will change. Low tiers are usually fast and are able to keep up with your mobility and speed. When you're facing opponents that can keep up with your speed, it will be difficult for you to recover stamina. You will struggle even against a pack of low tiers, and without water, there's not much you can do. Even with water on your side, it will be difficult to take both at the same time. I think you get the point. Bottom line, if you get attacked by a pack, do whatever you can to run away. Having water by your side may save you from being killed. Of course, if there's other semi-aquatic nearby, then you'll have to run away from two problems. Of course, it shouldn't be too problematic. You should have pretty decent swimming speed. And with the probably exception of Sarkisukus, you should be able to swim away pretty easily. Of course, fighting in water is an entirely different thing. First of all, you of course need to have your arsenal meant for water fights. To be honest, facing Spinosaurus in water is actually preferable than facing other stuff. 
Spinosaurus may be capable swimmers, but on Gondwa there, are, there is a lot of lakes that has caves inside, and that's where the Spino's large bodies will work against them. What's more, Spinosaurus carries a large target on its back. Literally, you just need to watch out for their attack and target the sail. It's not much they can do if you attack their sail due to their attacks being aimed literally other directions. In these fights, you should refrain from using the Viper Strikes. It doesn't do much damage so it's not really worth it, just do hit and run with the Venom Bite. If you're low on health, do not be shy to use the environment to your advantage. There are some areas where the Spinos can't even get to, and all he can do is just scream at you. Remember, you are much smaller than the Spinosaurus. Why do you need to face the Spinosaurus head on? There is one weakness though. By doing this strat, you will limit your oxygen intake. Of course, if the Spinosaurus doesn't guard you and wait for you on top of the surface, then you can just try and lose him, and when you get the chance, just go up for air. Facing Sarcos or any Crocodilians is a different matter though. Just like you, they have pretty high water mobility, much more than the Spinosaurus, and they can get into cave areas. So there's no really hiding from them, only running if situation goes dire. The only way for you to deal damage to the croc is by tail riding him. Unfortunately, the croc's amazing turn radius makes that really difficult. Even if you try to run away, because of the lunge ability they have, you can't run in a straight line. You need to make distance, use your superior land speed, and then get away. And of course, don't let them too close. Unfortunately, with the exception of your own kind and Concavenator, there aren't many battles you can win in water. The Sarcosuchus has too much speed and agility, while Spinosaurus and Dinochirus got too much health. In other words, don't fight them solo. Before I summarize, I really had to say, I really do think that the true proper way to fight as a Megalania is by teaming up with another Megalania, or something else. In other words, I guess this video are more for you in case if you don't have anyone to play with, or you just want a challenge. If that is the case, then I would say, against an Apex, try to force the battle into an area where you can have access to water so you can have a much easier time recovering stamina and or get away. Because you can't just take hits, you need to do fakes out. And after being faked out, you go for the bite, and try to use the Venom Bite, not the Viper Striker. Technically same strategy against the pseudo packs. Make distance and recover if you're low, and once you're ready, fake out and then bite. And once again, Try to force the battle into an area where you can have access to water. Against a pack, there's not much you can do, so just head to into the nearest body of water. And if there's a semi-aquatic already in the water and he wants you gone, then just swim away. If you have the stamina, then you should have enough speed and mobility to make a getaway. If you're going to fight in water, don't. Unless you're up against another Megalania or a Cucabinator. The rest of the semi-aquatics are too strong or too fast, or both. To be completely honest, this stuff in this video might be outdated when you watch this, because during the production of this video, there already came out an update that has new abilities for Megalania, so take whatever I said here with a pinch of salt. Now, I'm gonna go and work with the last dinosaur of this batch, so thank you for watching and I will see you later.